Hello everyone and welcome to a very, very niche episode on Usually Fixing and Tinkering. Um, as per the usual, uh, with a load of DFT data that comes out every quarter. Um, the main one that came out was in May, uh, which tells me all sorts of amazing information and detailed information about how many cars of a particular model and specification are left from a particular year what their engines are, etc. There's an awful lot of detail. Body styles is not one of them things because there's so much information to pack into uh, the, what, what is effectively a huge spreadsheet uh, from the uh, DFT. What it does show is really important information. And as someone who owns a early f -Reg Mark III Fiesta and someone that owns also an early Mark III Fiesta that is an automatic with the CTX CVT transmission, which is an extremely rare option that not many people took up. It was a very new technology. It had been trialled in the Mark II Fiesta. Um, getting one of them with that particular gearbox today, uh, you'd be lucky. I think there's about 20 odd survivors um, just about. But these gearboxes weren't particularly renowned for longevity, durability. Uh, there was a lot of teething problems early on and there was a lot of learning lessons. I think this gearbox developed as the years went on uh, in terms of uh, the strength of the gearboxes, particularly because this gearbox is used in a lot of Rover applications. Uh, the Rover CVT gearbox is exactly the same gearbox. Um, and I have one particular example in Project Beatrix, um, and that gearbox is an absolute delight. And the CTX is the earliest version of this gearbox. It's the same gearbox, just some internal alterations to the hydraulic body, uh, some of the clutch packs, and maybe the belt itself is slightly different just to um, improve reliability and its torque capacity. Getting examples is so rare. Um, they do come up occasionally, and as you can probably imagine from the title of this episode, I go into two different things. How many f regs can I locate? And how many Mark III uh, and Mark 3.5 uh, Fiestas can I find with a CVT CTX gearbox today? Um, well, the question to both is not many. Um, as you can imagine, f regs Fiestas um, are very well sought after because they have uh, quite a few features that are a little bit uh, rare and unique. Uh, and some things, uh, particularly manufacturing uh, pieces, that would change very quickly. Um, but I have actually tried to start some sort of um, highly private and confidential, uh, because of data protection and all that, um, spreadsheet for all the f -Reg Fiesta Mark III's that I have located on Facebook or in the media that exist today. And it's taken me a long time and a heck of a lot of digging to find as many as possible. Um, and I do have the results of this. Um, so for those of you who are into Mark III Fiestas or just curious or actually own an F-Reg yourself, um, I, I know obviously um, Sean, um, Morsels and Motors, what a fantastic channel that is. Um, for some reason, you have not only managed to buy the earliest surviving um, Fiesta Popular, Mark III Popular, uh, which was registered three days after the launch on the 15th of April. This was registered on the 18th of April, this example. Um, he doesn't mind me doing a shout out here because it's a, a just a stupidly good car um, for what he paid for it. Um, most people would not look at a popular, um, but he's gone and actually taken the door mirror off and replaced it with a blank, which is very hard to get. Blanks are very difficult things to get because why would somebody keep a blank? Um, so I'm pleased that he managed to make that reverse or make it actually correct um, for its specification. It's just purism, things like that, that I absolutely love. There is also Richard. Richard, um, you know who you are. You do watch me. Um, I think you know who you are. At least I think you do. Um, Richard has also a Mark III, an early Mark III Fiesta F Reg registered on the 21st of April. Uh, so a few days after Sean's uh, popular. Um, it's an LX, but with a 1.4 CVH. How about that? The LX was only offered as a 1.1 HCS from Standard, and yet someone who bought the car from you thought, no, no, we want uh, a 1.4 CVH. We want a bit more punch. And that's obviously a manual as well. Uh, Stratos Silver, 
beautiful colour. Fantastic. Um, both these two Fiestas have done an, have sort of rough mileage of over about 65,000 um, miles. So a bit more than Ruby, but not too low. And this is what I'm going to go into today. Um, the table in front of me, which I can't show for confidential anti reasons because there's a lot of registrations, uh, specifications, engines, colours, mileage, no owners' names. I'm not going to put owners' names on here, obviously, because of data protection and all that. Um, but I have put the date that they were first registered. Um, so that there's a lot of interesting things in front of my screen. For instance, I can confirm that actually Ruby is not the oldest gear Mark III. Um, in fact, Ruby was registered on the 16th of May 1989 and there's actually a gear that was registered ahead of Ruby by six days. And that's also 1.4 CVH, um, but a manual. Uh, it's a, a Harvest Gold uh, two-tone grey car, um, but it's been modified. That car has been modified quite a bit. It's been lowered and I can tell what it was before because it still retains a bit of originality but it has been modified, lowered, slammed, cambered wheels, and it's done 90,000 miles. So quite high, high miles. Um, obviously, most of you actually recognize a lot of 80s Fords. Um, the Speedo in a Mark III, uh, like a lot of 80s Fords, only has five digits. So they never expected these cars to get to 100,000 miles, apparently, in that six-digit mark. So uh, that's interesting. So a lot of these cars possibly have had to go back to 0000. zero, zero, zero. Did I get that right? And then Ruby is, I can confirm, the earliest automatic and, well, the earliest gear automatic, but the earliest CVT automatic, um, registered on the 16th of May. And obviously she's barely just done 50,000 miles. She's getting there. She's a few hundred miles away, um, but she will hit the half a century uh, barrier. But I think Ruby, I think, to be honest, it's very safe to say that Ruby's not going to achieve six figures and go back to five zeros, which is fantastic um, because that would actually be quite annoying going back to five zeros and starting again. Uh, it'd be like a rebirth. Um, but apart from that, and I can tell you now, in total, because this is what you want to know, this is what you're hanging on for, um, there are around 22 f Reg Mark III Fiestas that I have in front of me that I've managed to locate. There could be more. If... You think that your car isn't on, well, obviously you wouldn't know if it was on here or not. Um, and if you've got an F-Reg Fiesta, give me an email. Just give me a private email and I'll see if I've already put you on the list, um, your car on the list and what your spec is, the engine, the color, the mileage. This is all fascinating stuff. This is, this is utter gold dust. 22. There are 22 surviving Mark III F-Reg cars. And that is sawn as well. A lot of these are a lot of these are sawn. I don't know which ones are sawn because I haven't made a, a mark of this. Um, but around six of them have been heavily modified, like the Harvest Gold one that I've just referred to, the gear. Um, there are a couple of gears. Um, from what I can say, there is one, two, three, three, four gears. There are four gears. That's it. Uh, my friend Mark, uh, Mark. Uh, I know you're watching this. Um, you have a Strata Silver uh, over grey gear, 1.1, um, and um, it's an absolutely stunning example. Um, and that is, there are only four gears. The Harvest Gold one, my one. Uh, there's another one, which is, hold on. Nope, sorry, I made a correction there. Three gears, just correct me there. Three gears, not four. I thought I saw a fourth there. So in terms of gears, there's only three. Uh, in terms of LXs, we've got one, two, three, four, five. There we go, five LXs. So a little bit more common, but not too much more. The L, the L was the most popular specification. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got about eight. We have got two average LCVTs, but they were registered far later than Ruby. Um, one is a 23rd of June uh, registration at L1.1, blue, 98,000 miles apparently, but it's been off the road, according to this, for five years. There are a number of vehicles on this list that have been off the road for several years and have not been MOT'd. This is a common thing with Mark III Fiestas that I'm seeing. 
People just put them on in garden hedges, in garages, just like Ruby. Ruby was around, going, you know, sitting around for ten years, and there's so many examples that are currently where Ruby was. But what sort of condition they were in when they were laid up, I don't know. And I do fear that the longer time goes on, the more chances that these are going to be wiped out of the face of the earth. Uh, I'm going to type in some of these registrations in, in 12 months' time to find a couple of disappeared, sadly, and been scrapped. Um, I hope not, and I hope that um, wh whatever's left will be preserved. Um, I am actually forgetting the S, because on launch you couldn't get, obviously, an XR2i because that was coming later. But for the moment, moment in time, uh, the, there was a load of surplus 1.6 CVH non-injection carbureted engines left over uh, from the earlier Fiestas, the XR2s, um, and they needed to be used. So the S was created. And I'll tell you what, getting an S is like rocking horse poo. Um, there's only two S's that I have recorded on here. One of them is a 22nd of June registration, and one of them is very late, a 21st of July. Remember, the F reg became the G reg on the 1st of August, so within about 10 days um, of that registration finishing, we have an S, but pff, there's only two. And one of them has a mileage that we're not quite sure about. I think it's done over 100,000 miles and it's, it's gone back to five zeros again, um, as you can imagine. But the, the other one is 24K, unbelievable. And that's been off the road for 11 years. That's a tricky one, that is. It's a shame. It's a real shame. Um, I mean, what's even more rarer, just going off topic, the SX. Have you seen an SX, the car that actually replaced the S? No, I haven't. In fact, I can recall that there are only two and they're both on Sorn. Who the hell has an SX? Who's got them? There's two people that own them. Come on, I hope to God that the person finds this because that would be amazing. Popular's, Popular Plus, the next model down, this is the poverty spec, as you can imagine. Um, that's why they ditched the popular name because they didn't, think that they wanted to be associated with being common. Um, that's a bit hard when it's actually the poverty spec model. Um, but Popular Plus, we have uh, a Popular Plus that is the third oldest, um, on a 21st of April registration. It's been off the road since 2006. Its mileage is unknown. It's a shame because that car's probably too far gone. That's too long, that is. There's a lot of 20-year-old uh, cars that have been away for 20 years. Some survive, some don't. I don't think Ford's uh, very well in storage um, unless someone's got deep pockets for that Popular Plus. They have to recognise that that Popular Plus is an early one. Um, there's another Popular. There's one, two... No, there's just two. Two Popular Pluses. That is literally it. Um, popular? Well, obviously, Sean, you're popular. Uh, is the earliest one surviving one um, and then there's uh, literally two of us free <laughs> so the L is the most popular one we have uh, about nine or ten L's including two of them being CVTs that that's literally it um, the most of the mileage Ruby seems to have a middle of the range mileage because most tend to hang around either the 20 to 30,000 miles or 60 to 70 or 80,000 miles. And there's, there's a few in the middle and Ruby's one of them, but Ruby tends to be the average uh, sort of mileage, um, which is quite interesting. It gives me confidence though, because <laughs> the, one, the, the one LCVT has done 98,000 miles. I hope it's on the original gearbox because that will give me confidence, that will. Um, it certainly will give other CVT owners that may watch this a bit of confidence. So. That's rather interesting, and that's what we're dealing with. So if you've got an f -Reg Fiesta and you think, I haven't included your car, just give me an email. As you give me an email, and we'll, we'll see if your registration is on my record because it's right in front of me. Um, now I'm going to come to the second rare thing about this video, and I love niche videos. I love automatics. I love owning them, and most people deride them, and especially this gearbox because... They do tend to pack up. I mean, that's my acknowledgement. I think the early um, CTXs d didn't fare well at all. And this is going to be a problem, which is why I'm now on the lookout for a spare gearbox. I'm going to give you the taxed and sawn numbers. So this gearbox was available on the Popular Plus, okay? It wasn't available on the Popular. I do make that mistake. Um, it wasn't available on the Popular. It was the only specification from launch it was never available on is the poverty spec. You would expect that. But the Popular Plus, the L, the LX, the gear, 
Then it was on a limited uh, edition called the Cayman. And I'll tell you about that in a second, actually, because there's someone actually driving around with the only automatic version left. Um, the I, uh, I was, I was, yep, the I, the Quartz, believe it or not, there was a Quartz Auto limited edition, uh, and the LX Sapphire edition, and the Azure edition. Very, very few editions to have this gearbox option. Um, but if I go down the list, there are currently taxed 38. Gosh, can you say that again? 38. There was only a few hundred of these ever really made with this gearbox or optioned with this gearbox. So, you know, it's proportionate. The, the survival rate is very proportionate. Um, and I've sawn about 219. But most of what's sawn have been sawn for a long, long time. Some of them will come back on the road. Ruby's one. Ruby's exactly, you know, Ruby is in the sawn data at this very moment. Uh, this data is six months old. It's Q3, uh, Q4 2023, sorry. Um, so that number will change on the gear CVT front. Um, so that's quite alarming. But I would generally think that most, obviously all the ones that are taxed are here with us. And I would say a very small proportion of that 219 are also um, very much alive and kicking. But this is the other thing. How many of that, say, that 38 that are taxed, how many of them are actually not automatics anymore? Because it's a very common thing to manualize them. To You are literally on all the groups, and I think it is probably good advice, because if you've got an automatic one, with the gearbox that's blown up and you can't get another one, but you, you, there's nothing wrong with the rest of the car. It's a very easy thing to change a gearbox on these cars. It's very, very easy. There's no electronics to get in the way. And most people will say pedals, gearbox, gear cables, speedo cable, radiator. You're gonna need these things to do a conversion. But I reckon a couple, about a week of graft and you've, you've literally created um, a, you know, a manual car effectively a manual mark three you've converted it and it will be very useful it will be drivable you know there'll be no problems really unless the gearbox is knackered that you've bought um so how many of these are actually on the original automatic gearboxes i'd say most of them but i'd say the, there is proof that i'm going to see that a few of them have been manualized it's a shame but i understand that and because they're so easy to change that's why it's happened um now I'm going to give you a breakdown here and I'm going to tell you how many of them are actually HCS engines, either 1.1 or 1.3, and how many are 1.4. Now, this is a very, very specific breakdown. Seven of that 38 are 1.4 CVH automatics. That is it. Now Ruby is not one of that seven. She is actually one of the Sawn cars, which is a, there's about 10 of them that are on Sawn. So Ruby will be making that number eight, but pff, that's not much. And the other remaining 35, I think there's about 30, 31 that are on the road. Well, they're either 1.4 or 1.1 or 1.3 HCS. So um, that's quite an interesting um, little split there. But as I say, Getting that configuration is rare. Um, and to make it even more interesting, I do actually have a register of all the surviving automatics, just like the F-Reg cars. I've just done exactly the same, their mileage, the date they were registered. And I can tell you now by looking at the stats that, um, well, I've managed to locate how many? 30, 37 of them I've managed to locate. So I've actually managed to locate quite a few of them, but some of these are sawed. Some of these are in the Sawn data, that 219. But Ruby's the earliest by some amount of months. I think the next number two is on a G-Reg, an LX CVT 1.1, 31,000 miles. It's about four months younger. That's ridiculous, but yep. Yeah. Uh, there is a few that have come into their own. Uh, unfortunately, there is around 36 in this list, but I know that about four of them are up for breaking. Two of them have been uh, have been manualized, yeah, <laughs> manualized. Um, 
and one of them ha is actually broken because the gearbox is broken. That's an M Ridge one on an LX. Unfortunately, they're re 74,000 miles that car has done and the gearbox is broken. That's an interesting one if that's the original gearbox. So it makes you aware of how long these gearboxes can last and I bet you the fluid's never been changed. Um, but most of these have done way more mileage from Project Ruby. And, and Project Ruby is on her original engine gearbox looking at the numbers uh, stamped on both of them, uh, matching the log book anyway. Um, but most of them are, yeah, quite rare. There is someone who is driving an L Reg Cayman automatic. The only one, the only Cayman that exists with that automatic gearbox, 1.3, uh, 40,000 miles. Wow, that's a car that nobody wants apparently, but that's interesting. I like rare stuff and I like niche stuff. And as much as people laud the automatics and say it is best avoided, I wouldn't be afraid. Because if you buy one of these, if, you, if one of these Mark III Fiesta CVTs come up and it's in working condition with an MOT, I won't worry about too much about the gearbox. I'd worry about the bodywork like any other Mark III. And if it's relatively tidy and it works and it selects the gears and it goes nice and smooth through the ranges, the first thing you do is you buy that car, you get it on the driveway and you change the fluid. You can check my video out if you want to check it out. I did a, a fluid change on Ruby's uh, gearbox, not a problem. Um, and that was, uh, that was a really interesting um, day that was. Um, and the fluid didn't smell particularly great, but it didn't look bad either. And the gearbox will hopefully survive for longer because it's got the correct fluid in it. And I think that's why the, what the problem is here. So that's my advice to anybody who's watching this video and who might be t tempted into a, a CVT Fiesta Mark III. I'd say go for it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised about an automatic driving experience from a car that, you know, it's a classic. It's a classic, it's a, it's a classic whether people like it or not. And um, I think it would be a very tempting thing if one came your way. You know that a certain K Reg one um, that has been featured on Classic World uh, in an actual review on YouTube. That car is a Stratos Silver one over grey. It is on this record here. And um, that car, it's done 87,000 miles. So that's being used as well. I wonder if that's on the original gearbox. See, this is fascinating. Anyway, I'm going to leave this here because it's getting too geeky for most people. Most people have switched off already. Um, but it had to be done. I had to do a video on this. And now you've, and now you've seen it. So if you've got an f Reg Mark III Fiesta or an automatic Mark III Fiesta and it works, keep it. Because I don't know if you'll find another one very quickly or at all in the condition if it's in a good condition. Take care, guys.